So it's a funny video. This is from um, Sam Tripoli, right? Uh, who's now hosting a show with uh, Brian Callen, who I'm sure you guys are more familiar with. Um, if you've kind of been a fan of my show and subscribed recently, you know I've been covering all the drama concerning Brian Callen's recent sexual assault allegations and uh, um, the drama that kind of, you know, happened with these podcasts and cast media and all that sort of good stuff. Well, as you know, he's got a lot of support via Patreon. Um, they launched a Patreon for, and, uh, whoops. You yeah, know, I mean. They launched a Patreon. Yeah, so let's go back. So Sam Tripoli, as you guys are aware, is um, now Brian Callen's de facto co-host on a podcast they have via Patreon. They launched their Patreon back on the back of the Brian Callen allegations. Um, Brian Callen was essentially kicked off or removed himself from his own podcast, The Fire and the Kid. Patreon donations came in supporting Brian Callen in the hopes that they're going to do their own podcast called The Fire and the Rinks, that they're going to do behind a paywall. Cast Media, the production company, or the real bosses of The Fire and the Kid stepped in and said, hey, no Callen on the podcast. No sponsor's going to want to do a show with you guys, with him associated with it. They rebranded it as a show with Brandon Shaw with other co hosts. It's now going down in flames for the most part. The recent episodes are being downvoted to hell. I'm not sure if it's mostly the homeless cats doing it off it's actually fans but if you look at the comments look at actual fans of the show just miss having Callan on there and are not fans of Josh Wolf's Josh Wolf's um, ex, um, enthusiastic laughter let's say that for the most part <clears throat> but the Sam Tripoli show has been you know there's been a bit of a loop with sports from people so far right because he has a particular you have to be a fan of Sam Tripoli to be a fan of that show right he's got a he has a certain appeal but what I do like about Sam Tripoli is that he he does shoot from the hip, right? He does kind of say it as it is because he's a little bit crazy and because he's a conspiracy theorist, he does tend to kind of question everything and maybe see the bigger picture in things. And if ever there was a time to see the bigger picture, it was now during this whole episode of takedowns within the LA comedy scene. This is the moment to really kind of call things as you see it and not as they're being presented to you. And Sam Tripoli went on this really amazing rant on the podcast. I'm not sure what podcast this was, but it's a little clip that I found online um, where he basically pulls a lid or pulls a curtain back on Hollywood and what's kind of really going on with the LA comedy scene and just eviscerates them from beginning to end. I'm going to play uh, the clip for you now and comment on the other side. And, uh, you know, I mean, wow. What do you think of, uh, we talked about earlier, but I'd love to get your take on cuties. Oh, you kidding oh. me? I mean, even though you look like the guy that did the casting <laughs> for it. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely fucking what a joke. What Netflix has done this month. I, you know, I thought it was bad that they gave Rob Schneider a special, but then they go and they. Sarah Cooper. Sexualize hey, children. <laughs> so, oh, well, the, first of all. Chris D'Elia gets accused of uh, all this shit, shows evidence that that didn't happen. They still drop him, but they're like, we're getting rid of Chris because the accusations. But to make up for we got all 11-year-olds twerking. Right. I mean, yeah. it's like the hypocrisy yeah. is unbelievable. It's 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 unbelievable. They're, they're, they just made... Especially with cuties as well, because I think the assumption is that it's a French film made by a Sudanese woman. So, you're, uh, so you are... It's fair to assume if this movie was made by somebody that looks like a Karen, it wouldn't have got the benefit of the doubt that it had got recently uh, via the press. And because it was made by a person of colour, it got a standing ovation at the Sundance Film Festival, which makes no sense, right? Sundance Film Festival still flipping invites, um, what's his name? Roman Polanski to premiere some of his films, right? A convicted sexual offender who ran away to France to evade capture in the US. They still invite him there. So using the Sundance is like an excuse. There's no excuse. <laughs> New Chris, they made new Chris D'Elia's by putting that out uh, there. You know, it is what it is, but you know, a bunch it, of people out there trying to DM these stars of cuties right, right now. Oh, and I bet you they have a social media. <laughs> Who did these, these chicks? Girls? These eleven-year-old girls. I bet you you can follow them. You can tweet them. I I guarantee it. Like I love how they're like, it's French. Oh well, it's French then. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> let's see some fucking yeah. eleven-year-old so bee holes. Exactly. Stinky eleven-year-olds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we talking about this when we could be talking about the crime that is Sarah Cooper and her fucking Netflix special? I don't I care, mean, dude. Yeah, that's done, a, that's dude, a hard... don't you understand? It's, it's... That is just the death fucking... That's just the fucking nail in the coffin. Because you know what happened, dude? All the rats at, at Viacom have all went over to Netflix, yep. and they're doing the exact right. same yep. thing. They're running into the ground. So yep. what's going to be the next one, then? What's Independent. Gonna next, like, Everything's going to go decentralized, dude. Yeah. People are going to like, dude, people are going to be like, I'm tired of this because no matter what blows up,
they come in and buy it and right. they pervert it yeah so the same thing's happened with youtube right youtube is effectively turned into a major network platform most of the videos on trending are made by big budget production companies really sanitized youtube creators but the actual essence of youtube has been lost because they're chasing network dollars they want ad revenue um they've essentially sold their soul to hollywood for the most part and unfortunately smaller independent creators such as myself and other people are the ones that suffer the most and it's sad because it happens cyclically it's just, it always happens like this netflix was a platform where they could have you know used it to basically shine a light on maybe the more unrecognized stand-ups right give them a bit of a platform to magnify their voice and then it suddenly got to a point where they had to make an internal investment and now they're you know essentially got all the big dogs there seinfeld's gonna have a special there Chappelle, chris rock plus all everybody else underneath them then they've got the sarah cooper lady who does those weird mimes of Donald Trump, right, which is very bizarre. I watched a couple of her stand up. She's a pretty funny girl. Her actual stand up is pretty good, but the memes or the little mimings of Donald Trump is very bizarre. I don't know why that's funny. It makes absolutely no sense. And now she's got a comedy special, which is probably going to, I'm assuming it's going to be good. To be fair, I don't think, I'm not going to be hating it as much. I think it's going to be a pretty good, interesting improv show. But it just shows, you know, somebody that has probably not as many credits or much experience in the industry as these guys sitting around this table has suddenly leapfrogged because she happens to catch the zeitgeist. guys. She's a person of color. Um, she's talking about Trump, where everyone seems to hate Orange Man bad, and then you suddenly get a show time, you suddenly get a Netflix special. And that's the issue. It's like, you know, there's, it just gets overpopulated with that type of person. It's not that you give that person the opportunity, it's that you don't also give the person coming up who isn't doing that the chance to. It's just you, you kind of put your eggs all in the basket of the sanitized um, version of what you want to put out instead of introducing some of the other underground acts. It needs to be every, everybody's got to be putting out their own shit, yeah. doing their own thing. I'm done. I'm like, dude, what happened to this comedy scene? I am over LA comedy. Nice. I am not going to, uh, Rudolph, I'm not even going to try to play in the reindeer games anymore. I don't give a fuck Shout about all Netflix. these phony fucks exactly. who celebrated all these dudes getting taken down. Amy Schumer. And, like, dude, Chris, I'm not, like, Whitney Carl, Cummins. I have nothing against it, but her taking Chris D'Elia's role is exactly what they want exactly which is get rid of the alphas and put in these fucking sacred betas and they, it's not about right or wrong it's about taking your job and eliminating the competition that's what this is all about exactly and all these fucking people these blue check mark people celebrating this shit i'm fucking done with and i watched who it was and i know who they are and i know what they fucking participate in i'm over all of them I'm and, that, and that's the interesting part as well think about it if you're in the LA comedy scene like, not to put, you know, smart on anyone's name, but how could you legitimately be comfortable talking your shit, you know, as comedians do, being loose, being funny, trying to court controversy, trying to get a reaction from people and just trying to say some wild shit around people like Whitney Cummings, around people like Amy Schumer? How could you be comfortable? You can't be comfortable because you've seen what they did to their own actual friends in Brian Callen and Crystal Lee, how they threw them under the bus or how they purposely um, um, purposely refused to mention them by name or to stand up for them or to say anything meaningful in terms of their friendship or to kind of reflect on them. Because imagine, think about it as well, right? Mate. Um, what's his name? Quentin Tarantino, right? Once when Harvey Weinstein allegations were rampant. Harvey Weinstein drugged women break them against their will right use his power and his influence to control manipulate harass and degrade women all over the park right not even just hollywood people like uh, uh, um, house assistants uh, maids everybody got it right this guy was a monster an absolute heinous monster but he was also very influential and very instrumental in the success of quentin tarantino so when Quentin Tarantino was asked the question, this is a quintessential monster everyone hates. Yeah, you could come out and just say, I don't know the guy, I wish death on his family, bury him, bury, him, bury, him, bury him under the prison, whatever. He was asked, what do you think about the issues going on with um, uh, Harvey Weinstein? And to paraphrase, Quentin Tarantino said, he is my friend, so I'm going to refrain from saying anything now. Obviously, the, what he's been accused of is disgusting, but he's been a good friend to me, so I'm not going to go out and go out and limb and say what I'm going to say. I'm going to wait for things to kind of develop and then I'll give my comment. Even Quentin Tarantino, whose friend happens to be Harvey Weinstein, who you can you can legit argue that Quentin Tarantino probably didn't see what Harvey Weinstein was getting up to. You might have heard it in the background, but being a big of a star as he is, I'm sure Harvey Weinstein, being the master manipulator that he is, presented one face to Quentin and one face to everybody else. So Quentin Tarantino, even in that instance, said, I refuse to comment. This guy's my friend. I refuse to comment. He's my friend. Harvey Weinstein. And these motherfuckers, it's only fucking Crystalia. 
it's a it's a pretty wishy-washy accusation, right? Even if it is true, you can still stand by the guy and say, I'm going to help him out. I'm going to go with him in rehab, blah, 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 whatever. No, they throw him under the bus, pretend they don't know the guy. In Brian Callen's case, Chris D'Elia, he deleted all his fucking images of him on his social feed. Uh, Whitney Cummins deleted all the shows with her and D'Elia because she didn't want to be incriminated in the issue. It's absolutely disgusting, mate. So how can you be... Imagine being a comedian and being around these people knowing that they sold out one of your fellow like comedic peers. Again, you don't have to be fans of their work, but how does that make you feel? Knowing that these people, if it comes push to shove and you have to choose between Hollywood and your scene as a comedian or the, you know, um, what do they call it? The comedy family, they're going to pick Hollywood. And unfortunately for them too, it's a bad choice because eventually if you do something untoward, Hollywood's going to eat you. And you're going to be left with no friends. I'm a pirate, dude. Butt pirate? No, that's for butt pirate. pirate. I'm a pirate, <laughs> a bottom, okay? Bottom. And I have a fucking pirate ship. And I don't want to be in any of your projects. And I won't work with any of you. You're all scumbags. Exactly. You're fucking... You, you let two... Uh, Brian Callen's the nicest dude in the world. Exactly. And you all let that shit go down gleefully. Exactly. Gleefully. Exactly. You're talking about LA comedians? I'm talking about all these LA comics exactly. that I sell with the blue check marks. But not, but not comedy store people. Yeah, no, of course. there are some comedy store people. Winnie in Cummings. There, very much so. Hmm. And I can't wait to watch them at the comedy store act like they. I, I don't know what the fuck they did. I know exactly what the fuck wanna, they did. I want to talk with you about this off the air. This is exciting. I'm over this shit, dude. You're, I don't want anything to do with you guys. You're, so, you're all selling your soul. In five years, you're going to be like, what did I do with my life? Yeah. I didn't make an honest human connection with anybody. I fucking thought my IMDb was important. And guess what? Johnny Carson was the biggest star in the world. Nobody talks about that motherfucker right now. Nobody. So all the shit you give a fuck about exactly. is going to be nothing. And Boom. all you're going to be known is a rat who Boom. fucking sold out everybody around them. Drop a and bomb I on can't that. wait to laugh at when your corpse is burning on the side of the fucking road, dude. Boom! <laughs> Sam Tripoli. Absolute legend. Absolutely. And he's true. He's right. He's absolutely right. And I think... If anything, that's the beauty of COVID and being under lockdown, especially if you live in Hollywood, because that machine, that juggernaut, is is it came to a grinding halt. All jobs, all opportunities, all shows, all writing gigs stopped, ended. You had to kind of make your own thing, put on your own shows, start your own live streams, your own podcasts, whatever it may be. You had to ramp up your social media um, content game. You had to rely on yourself. And I think from that experience, just even little traction you get, a little bunch, a little uh, viewership, uh, some little money coming in is going to show you, hey, actually, I don't need to do the stuff I did prior. I don't need to be holding the hand of Hollywood, hoping them to walk me through the door. I can do it on my own. And you also know that you can be location independent because you don't need to be in LA now to be a successful comedian. You can have your, I, I look at, I think people should do the model of a Tim Dillon, right? Tim Dillon has effectively been able to build his community like from the ground up, essentially. Now he's got a patron like in the 50 thousands per month, right? Um, he's been able to build it to a point where he can just go around, book gigs in certain locations, do a month or do a residency there, uh, go on road for six months and then come back. He doesn't need to be at a particular store or a particular comedy club week in, week out anymore because he has a fan base of people that are going to come sell out his shows again and again and again. And I think that's the, that's the, that's the kind of... Um, more that people should be following going forward. All creative fields, I think. Of course, it's, it's unfortunate that most of this has come off the back of um, an, a, allegations against some of their peers, people getting cancelled or whatever it may be. But I think it's always an opportunity to kind of review how you are conducting yourself in the industry. And again, I think if you're Whitney Cummins, you're Amy Schumer, you're these kind of people who are you know, Amy Schumer the other day was talking about some Black Lives Matter thing, right? She was on the panel talking about how we can combat police brutality, which is insane. She's already picked her lane. She's going to have the activism role. Um, Amy, um, Whitney Cummins is probably doing the same thing too. She's obviously decided that she's going to bet her, she's going to put her chips in the Hollywood scene more so because I guess she's a writer and she develops shows and so she sees more opportunity that way in terms of hanging around with dusty LA comedian male guys, which I understand. But I think in terms of um, the long game, for sure, you're more likely to get eaten or to get dashed to the side on a scrap heap by Hollywood as opposed to doing your own thing. Of course, Whitney, she's got a great podcast now and that's going good where it needs to be. But the signs it's sending that you're so willing and able to kind of throw your friend under the bus, it doesn't really bode well for you in the future, especially with how things are going forward. Um, people want transparency. People want honesty. People want people they can connect to. And I think this has probably done a lot more damage to her reputation and image with fans in general. I think even for someone like myself, who is an actual fan of her neurotic kind of self, um, 
um, than she probably has realized. And um, I don't know, man. I just think this is kind of the new future. The new future is going to be independent content creators creating their own little world, um, inviting their fans to it, um, that talk direct directly talking to their fans. Right? It's a whole method. It's a whole ideology behind one thousand true fans, um, and that's it. And then taking it from there. But you don't need to be. And again, unless you want to be Kevin Hart, you don't need Hollywood. You really don't. It doesn't make any sense, um, especially when that you rely on it to the extent where if the industry stops. You didn't having to make because I think that's part of the reason why a lot of these artists started doing those weird videos that imagine stuff because they just were bored at home and they needed some sort of outlet. I think that's a major reason why it happened. Um, so if you have an outlet doing a podcasting stream, doing a show on Patreon, live streams, you're doing your own shows, you upload onto Instagram, you do Q and A's, all this sort of good stuff, you're gonna be completely fine. And I guess, um, like I said, um, what Sam Trippy said it was true. Only he could say it because again, being conspiracy first, he sees things for what they are and what not they're trying to be presented as. And I think he definitely made some good points there.